Hey, good evening, Dr. Joe here at Atlas Health. And today is 100 videos, 100 days, day 13. And um, I just wanna share a story with you today. Uh, it's a pretty awesome day. I had a conversation with somebody and uh, one of, a client who is just doing awesome. And um, so this person has had uh, pretty significant hormone issues, like really gnarly hormone symptoms around her cycle for a very long time. And um, neurological type stuff going on, uh, like vertigo, um, neurological type, nervy type pain that's intermittent, seems to be worse with different foods, things like that, right? And so um, was referred to me by somebody uh, who heard good things about our office. And um, we met over a year ago. And it has been a bumpy ride, you know? Um, Initially, some pretty good results, and then some really, some times where like some really crappy things were happening, like clumps of hair falling out, right? Like not not something that you're like super excited about. Um, but the thing about this person that I really respect is that she really communicated well and um, and was really uh, easy to work with. And what I mean by easy to work with. Um, It felt like a collaboration, you know, from the very beginning. It was never like, fix me, you know? It wasn't like, here, I have these problems, fix me. It was more like, can you show me what to do so I can do this? And then we would talk and then she would implement something and either it would work or it didn't work. Or sometimes things would actually feel really terrible and we'd actually look at the tests and look at the exam and things actually looked better despite the fact that things didn't feel very good. And so on our first video, we talked about the optimum criteria of healthcare which is to understand the basic cause, uh, to develop faith, confidence, and belief in our client as part of my job, and to formulate a intervention that is fast, that is um, economical, that's lasting, right? And that's the outcome criteria of healthcare. And so the question in this video is, what is the number one factor, um, what's the number one reason why doctors, uh, healthcare providers have failed to manage a chronic issue, right? Or the, the gist of the question. And so I asked this question a while ago, and I, when I do a case review with clients, I ask this question because I'm curious as to what they think the reason is because patients have a lot of insight as to what's going on, you know, with their case. And one of the number one answers I get is that the, the, the healthcare model just is not set, not set up to help me, you know, um, the, the doctor doesn't have enough time. Uh, the doctor doesn't have enough training. The doctor practices in a philosophical system that is biased against being open-minded. They're very dogmatic in their views, so they just aren't open to seeing what's possible for me. And I just feel like um, they're not getting to the underlying cause or like some root issue that's being missed. And that's there's no doubt that that's a big part of um, what's happening with a lot of people is that they're they're going into healthcare models that are designed to treat specific conditions to run protocols and they're great protocols and they're great doctors. Uh, but the model that they're working under isn't allowing the time or the resources or the insurance model they're working under isn't allowing them the capacity to get the data they need to actually facilitate the response that the client's looking for. And so it becomes very frustrating. And so that's definitely a big part of, what's going on in a lot of chronic cases, right? But there's another side to this that I, I wanted to share tonight. And, and I feel that this, this case exemplifies what it is to be a truly collaborative with somebody. Um, there was, some, there was a, some time like the end of last year, uh, beginning of this year, where this case was really like, not doing so hot. Like there, if you look at the data, yeah, we're, we're plateaued, but there was new symptoms emerging and it would have been really easy for her to just say, this isn't working and to just bounce, you know, um, this is expensive. You know, it's, I'm not, it's certainly expensive if I'm feeling worse. And so it's time for me to just make like a tree and, uh, get out of here. <laughs> and so, um, oh, wait, make like a tree and leaf, right? So, um, but she didn't do that. And um, she kept communicating with me. We kept in communication, we kept talking, we kept brainstorming, we kept implementing, we kept trying new things. And at some point we got to a, 
a, a level where we talk this week and for the first time and since she can remember, she has a normal period for like two months in a row. And that's like so cool because that was her chief complaint, right? And here's what happened. She stopped taking the supplements that we had her on and she had a normal period, right? And it's like, well, does that mean the supplements that we had her on were causing her period issue? Well, the answer is no, because she had irregular period stuff going before we had her on any supplements, okay? But this work, when it's done with precision, when it's done with commitment and tenacity and um, collaboration, should result, in my opinion, in somebody not needing to take supplements, not needing continual work or continual therapy to get to that goal or to maintain it. You know, in some cases, it's just going to be that way. There's a totally lost capacity. There's an organ that's been damaged. It's been removed. It's completely gone. There's a capacity that's been completely lost, and we need some sort of medication or supplement to account for that or some sort of like consistent procedure like an adjustment or acupuncture or some sort of PT to account for that lost function, right? Like um, if there is a total replacement in a, in a joint or a stroke or something, right? There's going to be something consistent, necessary. But when there is a functional capacity there, but it just hasn't been tapped and the, the, the web that this person's caught in needs to be pulled off strand by strand by strand, um, and when it does happen, some things like this happen where now the person doesn't need any supplements to have the hormones, the, the cycling regular every month on time, uh, no pain, no symptoms. That was the goal of this case. And, and so in the optimum criteria of healthcare model, that's called functional independence which is we facilitated a process by our work together that allowed this person to now basically be ready to be on their own, you know? And of course we'll be here if, if there should be any bumps in the road. But in my opinion, aside from like a healthcare model that is at times ill-equipped to manage the chronic case because they're very loculated in their mindset or they have uh, only a few tools that they're allowing themselves to explore as far as uh, intervention goes. I see that clients give up and they, you know, start over with another practitioner and they like hop around from one doctor to the next and one doctor to the next. And I understand why, right? If you're not feeling well and you're not um, doing well and part of the treatment or the intervention, then why would you stick around, okay? And the answer is, if the doctor didn't do a good job developing faith, confidence, and belief in the process by understanding, okay, this is where you are, this is where you need to go, these are the things that might happen in between, if you're not feeling better, we need to be able to understand, are you not feeling better or are you not doing better? And if what we're doing isn't working, we need to put our heads together and figure out what can we do and what are you capable of doing that we talk about or who else do we need to get involved to get you to that goal. And so at least there's some sort of continuity in, in care and, and there's some sort of um, prioritization or organization of what the next step is. And, and what I see, I often meet people that have seen dozens of doctors, like more than a dozen doctors. And it's, it's understandable why they're jumping around. And I totally get that. Um, but in the, in the idea of the optimum criteria of healthcare, um, I would love to see more doctors taking time to explain the process so that the client can have confidence and that they don't like just run when there really is no need to run when there's just now a need to stop, take a look, reevaluate, understand what's going to happen next and make that decision together. Um, sometimes like this, this healthcare solution is like their Mount Everest. Okay. Have you ever talked to anybody that's done any climbing, what that feels like, what their hands feel like, what their arms feel like, what their legs feel like, what their lungs feel like as they're climbing Mount Everest? It's not an easy process. 
And in order to get to the top of Mount Everest, a person needs a level of commitment. But how can a person commit to a process if they don't have any faith, confidence, or belief in what's going on or in the clinician? How can they do that? How can they commit to a process if they don't really understand the fundamental cause of why they're there and have a process that can get them to their goal? Not a protocol, but a process, right? So if you're climbing Mount Everest and you're like, man, I, my lungs are burning, my legs are burning, I feel like total crap. And then you look out and you're like, wow, I'm like climbed like up to 12,000 feet. I'm at 12,000 feet, all right? But you feel like crap and it's like an exhausting thing, okay? But you're further along to your goal than where you started. And so in another video, I wanna talk about checkpoints and I wanna talk about, I'm going to talk about how do we actually measure progress in the absence of symptom change because part of what we've gotten away from in healthcare as clinicians is like understanding the basic physiology and intervening based on that and like saying these symptoms do relate but the symptoms also may not relate they can be very misleading a person could have a reaction to a supplement and they're having like an autoimmune flare or they're having a reaction to medication and they're having a hypersensitivity reaction to the medication or they could be reacting to the medication and they're actually having a normal side effect of the medicine, okay? Or they could be reacting to a supplement. They're having a die-off reaction, which actually could be suggestive that something is happening. We don't know if that's good or bad. So now we need to interpret that. So anyway, I'm super excited because this person has found their functional independence. And I'm so proud of her because she committed to the process. She committed to herself. And um, it's just kind of been a serious honor helping her through that process. So Anyway, that's the video for today. I'll catch you guys later on and um, have a good evening. Cheers.